What's up, nerds? It's your boy, the OG GM, coming to you live, large and in charge, on this 13th day of April 2023, about 9.30 in this morning, on this foggy, yucky, blech morning spring. Coffee. Yeah. Hey, remember when I did that thing at the end of last month about best d d movie ever? That's sort of my way to make fun of Honor Amongst Thieves. And then we were going to do Hawk the Slayer, but it didn't happen because apparently rights. Well, uh, the number one movie that you guys all said was the best d d movie pretty much is this. Gamers 2, Darkness Rising. Um, yeah, so let's look in this movie and to try and take a deep look at as much of this movie as we can uh without violating any uh stuff you know so and every time i say the gamers take a drink because somebody suggested that when i do these reviews i should have a drinking game involved which is actually a really bad idea so when i say take a drink i mean take a drink of water or coffee and nothing else Anyways, The Gamers 2, Darkness Rising. What do we know about it? Uh, it's a feature-length film produced by Jed, Dead Gentleman Productions, if you're not familiar with them. They've made Demon Hunters, Demon Hunters Dead Camper Lake, which was okay. Uh, the Gamers, The Gamers Darkness Rising, Journey Quest, uh, S.J. Tucker's playing D&D, the music video, uh, Journey Quest Season 2, and The Gamers Hands of Fate. Didn't they also reach... Um, One about Magic the Gathering, I think, or was that somebody else? Okay, but th th it feels like the, the Gamers series is obviously their most famous film. So it's a feature-length film uh, that focuses on a group of tabletop role-playing gamers as their game master attempts to shepherd them through a companion campaign that they've played through three times and yet actually finished. While the film is set in the same universe and has, has similar themes as the first one, it's not a direct sequel to the first as it focuses on a different group of players, even though the same actors, and it dedicates more time to the actual real life players and not the characters and how they are interacting with the world. Uh, so the film opens on a live action scene of three Dungeons and Dragons characters facing the final villain, the Shadow. However, they are quickly killed and after blaming each other, the players blame the Game Master claiming he did not follow the rules and plotted against them. Didn't we just talk about this? When two of the players wish to play a different game the following week, um, a third player demands they play the same campaign again, even though they just played it and lost for a second time to preserve their reputation that there is no game he cannot win. Uh, Lodge, the DM, wishes to publish the game as an official Dungeons & Dragons game model. So I guess the gamers is canon for D&D. But he's having trouble writing it. He knows how he wants it to end, but his players never actually finish the module. Gary suggested for the next game they bring in two more players in order to have a more well-rounded party. Uh, Cass is able to recruit his ex-girlfriend Joanna and quickly reveals why they split. Cass is overbearing and condescending, belittling Joanna's character design strategy. She chooses several abilities that normally wouldn't be useful to her character. The group has otherwise acquired an unfavorable reputation and Lodge, the DM, is unable to find anyone else despite asking 15 people. That sounds familiar. Um, the campaign begins with Luster, Flynn the Fine, and Daphne, who are summoned before King Aramis the Randomly Biased, the evil necromancer Mort Kenmon, has discovered the artifact known as the Mass of Death and wishes to use it, this to overthrow the kingdom. As they go on their way, where Luster kills a random NPC while Daphne attempts to roleplay, they are summoned before the Hierophant of the Grand Illuminated Holy Order, who sends two members of his order to accompany the party, Brother Silence and Sir Osric, who is a DM NPC. The, the party takes exception with the DM NPC, and uh, because they feel that the DM has created the NPC simply to railroad them. On their way, the group runs into a large party of goblins. The group are surprised and embarrassed when Joanna's allegedly poorly designed character single-handedly defeats the entire goblin party. Leo's bard is killed three times 
which, however, becomes a running joke throughout the remainder of the film. Okay, if you haven't seen the film, yes, it is a remaining, it is a joke that his bard dies, he erases the name, changes the name, has a new bard. That bard dies, he erases the name, changes the name, has a new bard, and then they get into this big fight, spoilers, like mid-scene, and he's like, build a wall out of the bodies of the dead bards! And it's, well, it's a lot more funny when you see it. Resting in an inn... The group faces and defeats Mort Aperion. Oh, yeah, that's another scene where they're like, stop necromancing. This is a great movie. I mean, yeah. Is it the best D&D movie? They head out to West Haven to decide to stop playing for the night. Lodge explains to Joanna the reasons why he keeps the other players on such a short lease. If he does not, they will kill, plunder, and impregnate the fantasy world. Yeah, murder hobos. Yeah. Uh, Scanlan. Yeah. The following week, the players continue the campaign by facing... Jerusal in the town of West Hazen. Due to his character's weak trait, Leo goes through multiple copies of his characters until the players are able to cleverly flee Jeruo by hiding behind the mound of dead bards. Torturing Jerusal with holy water, they learn of Mort Corman's location. Making their way through the impanded mine ship, they find the henchmen from the previous campaign and recover their previous party's equipment. Cool. The battle goes poorly for the players until Lodge Cats messes up the floor tiles and Cat distracts Lies Lodge while they place their preferables in preferable positions. Oh man, talk about um um player fudging and player cheating. Would you do that? Would he, I I feel like players would do that. I mean <laughs> After a lengthy battle where Silence using a lightsaber, shotgun, chainsaw, and dynamite, where he claims to have found in the trunk, uh, the bad guy is defeated and cryptically replies that there is another enemy, the Shadow. It is revealed to be the Hierophant, who tends to use the mask to rekindle the light of Theron. The group then realize that the heart of Theron, the church's most sacred relic, is actually a prison housing a deity. During the battle with the Hierophant, Leo finally proves to be of use as he awakens Theron from his prison, allowing Daphne to release her through Auric is killed in the encounter. Afterwards, Daphne is offered an unlimited wish by Theron, while the other rec players recommend she wishes herself immortal. She uses it to rec resurrect Osric, much to the extreme disapproval of Cass, who insults her and storms out. The other three continue playing, and Theron provides rewards for each. Flynn becomes a herald, Luster is stripped of her powers and becomes a cleric, and Lord Osric becomes the High Marshal of the Paladins. The campaign ends, and with positive comments from Gary and Leo, Lodge is inspired enough to write his module and has it published. Sometimes later, Cass apologizes for her behaviors, and the group begins another adventure. Lodge wants to send his group through an adventure module that another group was playing in the first Gamers Fills, but upon mentioning the Shadow... Mark, the lone survivor of that campaign, screams in fears and runs from the gaming store. As a new campaign begins with the masks of death having been the billing stone, the film ends showing the X-Men still alone in the mine. Did you know multiple game companies were involved in the production of this, including Pezo, Goodman Games, uh, Knights of the Dinner Table, Nodwick, Ninja Burger, Steve Jackson game, and even Wizards of the Coast. So this is before their whole copyright thing because the gamers is based upon and uses Dungeons & Dragons 3.5. Uh, so, yeah, I guess this is back in the days where um, Wizards of the Coast still wanted to work with other people and loved the product. <sighs> gamers, take a drink. Shadow, take a drink. Um, so yes, is this the best movie about people playing D and D? Absolutely, no question, one hundred percent. This is the best movie about people playing D and D. But is it the best movie about D and D, or is this the best D and D movie? I don't know. I mean, it does have a dungeon. Doesn't have a dragon. Uh, does have. Titolese and action and adventure and magic and humor and a bard that dies a lot. So maybe, maybe not. It's a fun film. Uh, definitely, definitely the best movie about people playing D&D. &D. But is it the best movie that is D&D? &D? 
Um, it's been a long time since I've watched it. Let's see if we can find anything on um, YouTube that we can play without getting in trouble. I'm sure there's some quotes in, on here. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is true. This is being a I don't remember it being this funny. Okay, I can't probably show any more of this without getting in trouble, but yeah. Uh, there are definitely um, clips on YouTube you can go see. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. This is this week's Is This the Best D&D Movie Ever Made? Is this the best movie about people playing D&D ever made and about the D&D culture and about the glory days when Wizards of the Coast still loved us? Absolutely. So there you go. You guys asked me to do it, so I did it. I will continue to go through the list of all the movies we went through. Well, the ones that received the highest ratings. Obviously, the ones that, like, one person went, oh, yeah, that movie. Yeah, but, you know, like, Conan and the other ones where everybody's like, that's the best D&D movie ever made. But they're not D&D movies that they don't have the word D&D in the name. Yeah, 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 they are, buddy. Yeah, yeah, they are. We could argue that for hours. Okay, there you go. That's it. If you appreciate this content, let me know. If you want to hear me continue with this little experiment, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please, it's my sister's birthday. And for my, her birthday, you know what she wants. She wants you to subscribe to the OG GM Adventures and help me hit 2,000 subs by the end of the year. What a great present that would be for her. Till next time, I'm the OG GM telling you to have a great day, and I will see you soon.